Today I'm going to introduce mass, volume, and density, and these concepts can be found in your textbook in sections 2.3 and 2.4. Mass is probably the most simple um, quantitative property that we can assign to matter. So mass is just a quantitative measure of how much matter a material object contains. Okay, so when we look at um, a, a brick, for example, the mass um, that is contained in that brick is 2.3 kilograms. And we measure this in the lab with a balance. Okay? The difference between mass and weight is that weight is a measure of how that mass is affected by the force of gravity. So on Earth, um, we have a pretty strong gravitational pull, whereas on the moon, the gravitational pull is not as strong. And so you can see this um, in a difference in the weight. So the brick weighs 5 pounds on Earth, but it only weighs 0.8 pounds if you go to the moon. But their mass, uh, the mass of the brick is still the same, regardless of whether it's on Earth or on moon, because it's a measure of how much matter is there. Volume is a measure of how much space a given material occupies. So if you have a solid, that would be length times width times height, like you've measured in um, math class before. Um, if you have a liquid, then we measure that using a graduated cylinder or possibly a flask or a beaker or something along those lines. And that um, volume would be measured in milliliters or liters, whereas the volume of the solid would probably be given in, in centimeters cubed. The last concept I'm going to talk about is um, density, and density is the relationship between an object's mass and the amount of space that it occupies, or the volume. Okay, and so um, really that tells us about the compactness of the um, matter and how much is squeezed into a given volume. And mathematically, density can be expressed as mass divided by volume. And you should be familiar with density a little bit from your everyday life. So um, you know that certain things float on water, and those things have to be less dense in order to float. So here we have a diagram of um, a popsicle stick, which is made of wood, is um, floating on top of oil, so it's less dense than the oil. Um, the crayon sinks to the bottom of the oil, so it is more dense than the oil, but it doesn't sink into the water, so it must be less dense than the water. And then um, a piece of pasta uh, sits between the water and corn syrup, and then corn syrup is the most dense thing, um, most dense liquid in the cup, but the paper clip falls all the way to the bottom because it's made of metal, which is pretty dense. Now let's do one example um, of how we would deal with density mathematically. So we know that we can measure mass um, in the lab using a balance, and we can measure volume using either a ruler or a graduated cylinder. Uh, and so if we had those numbers, how would we get density? Uh, and so here's an example where we know the density, but we don't know the mass. It says a pre-1982 penny has a density of 8.92 grams per milliliter and a volume of 0 0.392 milliliters. So what is its mass? Okay, and we know that the equation for density is density equals mass divided by volume. And so now we're going to plug in the things that we know. Uh, so we know that the density is 8.92 grams per milliliter. And that's going to equal m, which is our mass, which is what we're trying to find, divided by 0 0.392 milliliters. Okay? So in order to do this, this is just a little bit of an algebra review. We're going to multiply both sides by 0 0.392. And so these will cancel out. And then we're going to end up with um, 0.392 times 8.92. And that's going to give us 3.497 grams. Um, which is 3.5 grams.